Last Words of Jesus. Available now in bookstores. Learn more at lastwordsofjesus.com. Welcome to Truth Talk Live. All right, let's talk. The truth is, I can hide it. A daily program powered by the Truth Network. This is kind of a great thing, and I'll tell you why. Where pop culture, current events, and theology all come together. Speak your mind. And now, here's today's Truth Talk Live host. It's Mission Monday today. Men, we're talking mission quick prayer. Like, how quick is too quick to pray? <laughs> how quick is too quick to pray? quick to pray with someone like do you have a story along these lines where your quick prayer allowed you know something like you saw God just blew your mind because you immediately went to prayer as whatever that situation was you know maybe it was even a lost key or a sudden health need or man the technology failed I don't know how many times I've been on the air and all of a sudden the headphones didn't work or we would lose a call or whatever a quick prayer that just came through right at the moment you needed it or Man, you're driving along, and all of a sudden, a motorcycle goes by at 100 miles an hour, and you're like, oh, my goodness, and you pray for that? Young man, I like that. I even, I even heard several people talk about it this week, that they were late for something, and all of a sudden, they started to pray for a streetlight to change or to get that special parking place. We would love your mission quick prayer, 866 348 Seven eight eight four eight six six three four eight seven eight eight four is it a com- number to call in and share? I would love, love, love to hear your quick prayer. Like what happened? Like oh, the most amazing, amazing things happen when you just go to prayer almost immediately. And I bet you've seen it, and I need to hear about it again. Eight six six three four eight seven eight eight four. One of the ways that I guess God taught me this. Um, was, you know, we, we for years have had this uh, ministry within the Christian Car Guys show called the Jesus Labor Love, where we help single moms and widows and families in crisis. And, and, and so for years, I have volunteers to help me now, but for years, I was the lone volunteer. And I would call these applicants, you know, that would, you know, send in their applications through the ChristianCarGuy.com that they needed help. And, and often you could hear the anxiety, like these, these, these moms didn't trust you. You could tell that they were very anxious over their needs. And even though you would think they would be very humble, it, often they seem really like on, on the <laughs> edge of their seat, so to speak, based on the anxiety and the panic, right? They got a, a child in the hospital or whatever, and their car's not working. I mean, I understand. But anyway, I would notice that it was difficult to talk to them at first because, you know, they were so anxious. And so God gave me the idea as almost quickly as possible in, in talking to these usually young ladies, um, uh, you know, and again, I'm talking to them on the phone and, and I would just say real quickly, like, is it OK if I pray with you? And then I would just God gave me this prayer to say, like, Jesus, thank you for, you know, this mom and and her courage, right, to reach out and ask for help. Like, I know how hard it is. And Lord, I just pray that you would help her uh, here, that we would meet this need that she has and and help us to see ways that maybe we hadn't thought possible in order to get her back on the road safely and securely. In Jesus' name, I pray. Just something like that is all I would pray. However, it was, I think, the heart in it or something because, oh my goodness, I, I, I have never seen anything like it. <laughs> the change in, you know, the way that somebody would sound, their, their voice countenance, so to speak, just with that quick prayer. And, and I learned that, like, man, you just don't, and I've taught all my, uh, the, you know, the people that make the calls for me, all the volunteers since, uh, the very first thing, as quickly as you can get it in, you know, pray a prayer like that, where you really thank them for having the courage to call in and ask for help, and, and, and really thank God for this opportunity to help, and, and it's amazing how, like, it, it just makes the conversation so different, and, and so much more, you know, light-bringing, and 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 interestingly, I don't know how many times I've had someone tell me, you know, Robbie, I've, I've never had anybody pray for me like, like that. Or, I, you know, I've never had anybody do that. And and then you just, it's kind of sad when you think about it that, that that isn't the first thing that we often do. And so I'm, I'm thinking you got a story. I would love to hear yours. The number to call in, 866-348-7884, 866-34-TRUTH. We got my friend Buskman in Ohio. 
Busman, you're on Truth Talk Live. Hey, happy Monday after a weekend there, Brother Robbie. Yes, it is. I do have a, it, it's, it's. I love Missions Monday, Robbie. I'm glad that Sue lets you do that because, yeah, it kind of keeps us focused on why we were saved, Ephesians chapter 2. Yeah. To do unto good works. It is. It's exactly right. And so what, if you got a story? I've got, I've got two. Mine's real quick, but I've got a ton of them on my end. But I want to share a little bit longer one. It's not, won't take long. Of my dear brother and your brother Silas is his name. So let me give you mine first, Robbie. Okay. Talking about technology. Talking about technology. I was in the bus mobile going to the lumber yard. And I am not kidding you. I was having problems with my phone at the time where it would just die in the worst times. And I couldn't figure out why it would. Well, on the way to the lumber yard, it completely just blacked out. I couldn't turn it on, couldn't turn it off. It was just blank. And I am not kidding you, Brother Robbie. Truth Talk Live, I literally laid the palm of my hand on the face of my phone, prayed, and it lit up as if nothing ever happened to it. It just started right up. I didn't touch any buttons, nothing. I just laid my hand, my palm on the on the face of the of the phone and prayed and just asked God to 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 turn it back on. And within probably three seconds it completely fired back up and never had a problem again. Never seen anything like that before. Now So you laid hands on it, you laid hands on it, but you didn't anoint it with oil? <laughs> I didn't know it with oil, James chapter five. I guess it's because it's not a human. But but yeah. So, I, I, so here, when it comes to the bus mobile, I assure you, you need to anoint it with oil every once in a while. <laughs> yes. I, you know what? My anointing oil light is it's starting to say, change me, bus. But I, I'm literally looking at it, Robbie. That's funny that you say that, brother. Because it's literally saying it's time to change it. That's too funny. Yeah, there comes so a time where you need silence. fresh oil. There you go. It just is. Yes. Amen to that. We need a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, so my brother Silas, he's got this dog that he got as a pup, and it is just a grouchy, grouchy dog. He named it Preacher. And I'm telling you, when I met Preacher for the first time, he bit my ankle and ran away. And my brother <laughs> Silas says, Busman, that's, that's what happens with Preacher. He, he just welcomes you. Oh, wait a minute, uh, Busman. we gotta, we got to go to a break. <laughs> so when we come back, we're going to hear the never-ending saga of Preacher and. The- <laughs> I know about the ankle biting, but not, as long as he doesn't bite your heel, you know. We'll be right back. We need right. your call with your quick prayer, your mission quick prayer, 866 348 7884. Mission Monday, and we're talking today about mission quick prayer, right? How quick is too quick? <laughs> Do you have a story along those lines where you're quick prayer allowed you to see how God just literally could come into something and blow your mind. I want to hear those stories. I would love to hear them. 866-348-7884. 866-348-7884. When we left our hero, Buckman, Buckman, <laughs> preacher the dog was nipping at your uh, ankles. That is correct. The initiated me, ran away, <laughs> and then Brother Silas gave a testimony in church of, of Preacher's story. And come to find out, as Preacher got older, Robbie, his hips started giving out, like this breed of uh, dog does. And all of a sudden, Preacher just stopped moving and wouldn't, you know, wouldn't get up, wouldn't walk. So Brother Silas decided to bring Preacher to church. Laid him, laid him at the altar at church, prayed over him, and this was after he had contemplated putting him down or possibly paying for the, the vet bills to get the preacher's hips fixed. And dear brother Silas, full of the Holy Spirit and his love for God the Father and the people, said, I'm, I'm not letting go on this dog. I, it, he means too much to me. Even if he bites busman on the <laughs> runs away, and I, I I I grew to love the dog, I do. And sure enough, Robbie, True Talk Live, he prayed over Preacher, took him back home in his truck, put him back out, and you know out in the, out in his field, 
And he got up the next morning, and Preacher was running as if he was a puppy again. Wow. What a testimony. Blew me. Another, that's God, you guys. Oh, that's, yeah. That's our God. And, it, you know, it's just awesome, I think, that, that he had that kind of boldness, right? To take the dog to the altar. Like, man, I mean, and that's right where a preacher needs to be, by the way. <laughs> That's where every preacher should be. Yes, brother. God joke alert. <laughs> well, I, I think that I think that's an amazing story. So, since you're in Ohio, right? Isn't that where you are? You're in Dayton. I am. Okay, so I don't know exactly. I can never remember the name of the city, but it's way up there. It's on Lake Erie, and it's 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 past Sandusky, going towards Pennsylvania. I went. Okay. Steel, about two years ago, I went steelhead fishing up there. And for those of you who are not familiar with what a steelhead trout is, like, oh, my goodness, it's the Mac Daddy. It's this big, huge trout. And, and they're big. Yeah, those are big fish. And when if you ever see the movie A River Runs Through It, he catches this gigantic trout at the end of the movie. And that that's, that's what it is. It's a steelhead. And so I had a chance to go up there with a friend that lived up there by the name of Terry. And... I had caught, you know, four or five of these unbelievable fish. That they were just so awesome. But in the movie, a river runs through it. He catches it on a on a fly rod, which you know, catching the fish, a big fish on a fly rod, is completely different than catching it on a regular rod. So, absolutely, they're thinner. Yeah. We 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 sat there at lunch that day, and I was like, "Man, guys, would you pray with me that I can catch one of these steelhead on a fly rod?" But I said, more importantly than that, I want to catch it. While I'm in the presence of Jesus, like I want to, I want to share the experience of catching this fish with Jesus, right? I, that was what I wanted, and and I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. I hope you do. That there's certain things like you can go on adventures. Yes, with to show God's power. Sure, absolutely. And, and you just feel Him as you're as you're reeling in the fish. So I said, my problem, guys, is every time I catch one of these fish. It's so exhilarating because they hit like a ton of bricks that I completely forget God. And the next God's out the window. I haven't thanked him for the fish or anything. And I'm just worried about my fish rather than worried about God. And I said, you got to help me. I'm really struggling here. And so Terry said, all right, you know, I'm going to help. So, you know, about an hour later, we're down on the river. I got my fly rod in hand. And man, I, I hook a monster. And the second I hooked that fish, of course, my mind goes right off Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. There's nowhere to be found. My friend Terry goes, I can hear him. I'll hear him till I die. Like, praise God. <laughs> he yells across the river. He was praising God for the birth of you, Brother Robbie. <laughs> and, of course, the moment he did that, you know, I just toned in and just like, oh, yeah, Jesus, here we are. This is what I wanted, man. This is it. And, and immediately I had a chance to, um, to, uh, and it was a 30-minute. I fought that fish for 30 minutes on that fly rod. Wow. Um, and it was, it was the, the catch of a lifetime just because, you know, all the prayer that was involved in it and, and the chance for that mission quick prayer. Because Terry, my buddy, who, who had the quick – you know, he, 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 you know, God gave him whatever that, you know, it's just that to God be the glory. That's, the, that's my Ohio story. But, you know, since we're talking Ohio, Buxman, we also have Mike with us. So we, you know, we get Mike a chance to get in on this. So Mike, you're on Truth Talk Live. Well, Buxman had two of them. I have two in mind, but. <laughs> good, good. I'm not surprised. I'm not either, but, oh, uh, sorry. Um. What, well, my my I have an older dog, and when, since with the dog story was there, I have an older dog, and it's it's fourteen, fifteen years old. It's a Chihuahua, and it's, she's still here. And uh, the other day, she was really sluggish and really not doing too well. And on on our couch, I mean, you know when a dog passing away. I mean, you just know. Right. And and then uh, she she's gasping for air. And I and my wife prayed for her. She immediately went like this. She said, "I'm pray- dear Lord. I don't want to have my dog die right here in my hands. Please, Lord, pray." All of a sudden, that dog just got new life, and it's 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 beautiful. I mean, and this dumb hey, dog, man. yeah, same man. man. And, and this dog is running around 
and every time it poops on the floor, I says, you prayed for it, you know, to my wife. <laughs> yeah. well, Mike, you had fun. to share that detail, didn't you? I did, I did. <laughs> He's a dad, Robbie. I understand, dad, I do. Dad, I so I'm I just... said, you, I, it's, it, she goes, I got to feed the dog. I said, I know, you prayed for it. You know, I, I mean, I, I mean, I've been doing this for about a year now, and then oh, every it... time we have to do something with this dog, and then she's unbelievably healed. You know, what I mean, just it, it's like a new dog. It's like a puppy. You know, what I mean, it's like it's it's crazy. So I have, a, I have a question, Mike, about this. It's yeah. a Chihuahua. You said my my Chihuahua. My yeah. old my older daughter. We we spent. The weekend at her house with my granddaughter and taking care of her dogs, one of which is a Chihuahua, and it's about 15 years old. But this dog's tongue, it, it, it stays out of its mouth all the you know, It did not used to be this way, but as it's aged, and they say this happens to Chihuahuas. Does that happen? Is your Chihuahua, does their tongue hang out all the time? Yeah. On the side? they lose their front teeth. Yeah, they lose their front teeth because their teeth get so bad. I, I've heard from the vet that their teeth get so bad that they lose their teeth and then their tongue sticks out because their <laughs> tongue is so long. So that, and then so I did not know that. I was like, sleep, man, he's this guy yeah. he just has this look on his face with his tongue hanging out. I'm like, what's I, up with now I've learned something. I I yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. We You'll stay with me, I'm sure, right? You guys okay, yeah. hang out. Oh, we'll be yeah. back. And, of course, we need you in on this conversation. 866-348-7884. 866-34-TRUTH. I would love your quick prayer story. Like, what happened? Man, this is awesome. We'll be right back. Truth Talk Live. From Loveworth Finding Ministries, here's pastor, teacher, and author, Dr. Adrian Rogers, with a treasure from the Word. There is coming to this earth such devilish deception. Jesus said it will be so strong if it were possible, Satan would deceive the very elect. Don't you think that your intellect would keep you from being deceived? Don't you think that your good intentions keep you from being deceived? Only the Holy Spirit of God will help you to see clearly and straightly in these days in which we live. Satan is coming. He is going to take a man and put into that man such incredible power. He will be Satan in human flesh as Jesus Christ was God in human flesh. Learn this about the devil. The devil is not against religion. He uses religion. The temptation in the Garden of Eden was not for Adam and Eve to fall down. It was to fall up. <laughs> he, he said, you can be like God. It's the spirit of Satan. It's the spirit that's in this world today that speaks of the so-called divinity in man. Learn this about Satan. Satan does not want casualties. He wants converts. Satan wants worship. For more about Love Worth Finding and Adrian Rogers, visit our website at lwf.org. Welcome back to True Talk Live. Today we're talking about Mission Monday, Mission Quick Prayer. How quick is too quick to pray with someone, right? Do you have a story along these lines where, where all of a sudden this quick prayer or even, you know, a, a series of prayers, however it worked, we would love to hear your story. 866-348-7884 is the number to call in. 866 348 Seven eight eight four. Even you know some of my favorite stories would be maybe you're on a short walk or something or a long walk, and all of a sudden you said, "God, show me something, something cool, man!" And all of a sudden, whoa, there's this flower or a deer comes by or whatever it is. Those stories blow my mind. You know, any place that God shows up, we want to hear about. Eight six six three four eight seven eight eight four. We got both Buxman and Mike in Dayton, and so Mike, you had another one you were going to share. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Um, there's this um, uh, customer I've dealt made cabinets when they were younger. Um, they were uh, kitchen cabinets for them and installed them, and and they, you know, they were a Christian, a Christian people, and they were awesome people. And uh, as the older they got, they had me keep coming over to the. Uh, called me up and asked me to hang uh, hang pictures or do this or do that. And then one day they had to move over to a uh, nursing home. 
And it's because uh, her, she, uh, I don't want to say their names right now, but she had to, um, uh, maybe I should, but um, they they probably know who, if they're listening, they know who this is. And then she, um, she, she couldn't, um, she had old timers and she couldn't remember what she was doing and this and that. And then, uh, and to make a long story short, Glenn, Glenn was, they had to move into an old folks home or an older uh, assistant home. And, and Glenn was coming over to me and then he asked me to do this and do that and help him move this and do that. And I, and I did. And I, and I said, Glenn, and she, he kept telling me, talking about his wife all the time. And I said, Glenn, Glenn, let's stop. Uh, can, can we pray about your wife and then let's pray about her wife and she understands what's going on here. You know what I mean? and why we're moving into the assistant home and stuff like that. And, and he goes, wow. Okay. And I, I stopped and I prayed for him and his wife, you know, and, and, and I said, you know, let's, uh, let's pray that she understands that, uh, you know, what's going on. And the next day he calls me up and says, Mike, God is so good. She's understanding that she's not, you know, she doesn't understand everything all the time, and that's why we're at the new place, and this is why we're doing what we're doing, and she told me all about it, and I am so excited, and and then she's been remembering, and this was about four or five days later, and he's, I'm remembering, she's remembering everything about what's going on, and this, this is so much easier now. I'm so glad you prayed for me, you know? Oh, wow. <laughs> it's Praise God. That's exactly- and, and it's it was it was beautiful. You know, what I mean, it was just beautiful that God met their needs because they are good people of God. You know, what I mean, just awesome people of God. And that's why I helped them out all the time. You know, what I mean, they call me up and said, Mike, can you hang a picture? And I go, sure, I'll be over there after work and I'll hang a picture. You know, what I mean, and, and they were just people, the people that you want to be around. You know, and, what I mean, you know, just- oh, I do. And, you know, what's funny about that, Mike, is that. I have a friend who is actually, they've got a brain tumor, and so it's like Alzheimer's, but all of a sudden they just forget everything. And yeah. and she is really struggling, and, and they're, fortunately for her, her brother has taken her in in Mississippi. She moved on to North Carolina, but she gets very disoriented. And, and, and so, you know, I'm always asking God when I get in the car somewhere, you know, who do you want me to call? Because I've got a list of folks that, that you know, God kind of, allowed me to you know to help out in their lives anyway so it's it's not unfrequent that he asked me to call her because when she goes into one of these attacks she is so full of anxiety it's unbelievable but it's to, even today like on my way back after lunch i said god who do you want me to call i said call ann all right so I, I called her and um and and she started and i knew where she was at she was like i don't know why i'm here you know, I, I can't, I need a plan to get into this and all this stuff, you know, where her brother's really trying to help her, but she doesn't always understand. Yeah. And just like you, if there's, you know, it's like here, the, the, the signs are flashing as bright as ever. pray, 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 pray. <laughs> like pray, Robbie, pray. Yeah. You know, so, <laughs> and can I pray with, you know, and boom, and we pray and I'm like, Lord, you know, help and to see and da, da, da. And again, it's, 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 it's just like you said, it's instant, instantaneous. That immediately, like, she's back um, for whatever yeah. time God gives her to be back, and 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 it's just, it, yeah. know, it's 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 not only that I get to see God at work, but that she gets to have her life back for whatever period of time, including your friend, right? That that is, yeah. is suffering through that stuff, and so, Buxman, yeah, we we we, we, uh, we want to give you equal billing here. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm being blessed quickly. here, brothers. I am. I'm being blessed. All, all I'm hearing, though, is when we initiate this wonderful tool that's given to us called prayer, we watch what God does, and it just builds our faith in a manner unlike other things that's offered to us as as people of God. And I'll tell you guys, keep a journal, uh, write stories down like this, like preacher, like this dear lady, and you're basically writing your own walk with God, which almost kind of is like your own personal Bible, your own personal journal of God literally moving in your personal life, not just in Brother Robbie's, not just Brother Mike's, not Brother Busman, not Paul's or 
or Thomas's in the scripture, but yours. It's an awesome thing to engage. So I would just say to all the Truth Talk listeners, um, don't be afraid to pray. Step up. If somebody, if you're in your church service or you're in a small group and someone says, would someone like to pray? Go ahead and, and, and offer it up. This, without, don't let your left hand know what your right hand's doing. Just go ahead and start praying. No, absolutely. And, you know, I, I guess it was about two weeks ago, I, I was talking to our church secretary, and she was telling me about a member that was really struggling because she had an upper floor apartment, and she couldn't get up the stairs anymore. And how she had, you know, been asking and asking, you know, the people that had the apartment complex, could they please get her a downstairs apartment? So I just immediately said, you know, and God's been teaching me this for years and years and years. I was like, Annette, let's, can we just pray for her right now? Let's just pray. And and so I said, you know, so we, we I said a quick prayer, and there was nothing fancy about it. I said, Lord, please help, you know, Dorothy get this apartment. It would be wonderful if she could just be on the ground floor. She doesn't have to go up those stairs anymore. In Jesus' name I prayed. Okay, right? And just like you, just like you described, man, 20 minutes later, Mike— <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Robbie, you're not going to believe what happened. Dorothy just called me, and then and she got the downstairs apartment. I mean, it was it was like she got to see it because you know God prompts us to pray, and, and again, he he's the hero of the story. I don't know, you know, he's just been teaching us Amen. these things, and like especially, and I don't know why it's just so much fun to see it bring joy into somebody else's life, right? It does. And, Amen you know, to that, um, Brother Robbie. Yeah. yeah, it does. Amen, Robbie. Um, yeah, it does. Um, I've told stories to you, Robbie, about the guy at the McDonald's. And what happens is is when you stop and pray for the person right away, they're open to hear to hear what you have to say. You know, I mean, they're hear what God needs to say through you. Is that, make, is that, is that better? When you say, Great God, call, okay, I want to be used. Uh, I, I want to be used by you, God, here. So you just immediately just stop and say, God, I want to pray for this. And you, in God saying to do this a lot of times, you know, he says, pray for this person. And I'm, okay, okay, God, I'm going to pray. Okay. So you pray and you, and, and now the person's willing to listen and hear the truth, which right. is the, you know, the, the truth of what needs to be listened to them about how to, how to be saved or how to, how to, uh, you know, not, you know, that they can, God can change the way what's going on in their circumstance in their life, or you know how overcome an issue. They need yes. God, yeah, or they need to be get closer to God and read their Bible, or or pray themselves. You know, what I mean, there's a lot of things that you could these people, you know, people need to listen to themselves about. You know, what I mean, and and by praying for them right away helps break that ice. And and I, I I'm sure. I'm sure a lot of people's experienced that. I, I know I have a lot. I mean, and somehow I that's why I'm calling today is because, you know, God's led on my heart a lot to just say, go pray for that person. And then I say, hey, hey, can I pray for you? And, I, and they're, they're, they're crazy. I mean, it's, it's crazy yeah, how people, God works. You no, know, yeah. I'm telling you, Mike, <laughs> that, you know, I, I was interviewing, and God's just, I still have to pinch myself. I get to do what I get to do. But... I was interviewing Debbie Ryan when she did the movie What If. She was a Disney movie or Disney Channel star that used to do um, uh, I've, uh, <laughs> Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. She was the girlfriend, and then she it was, she, it was something like something Charlie. Anyway, she was a big Disney star, and she had done this Christian movie called What If, which is unbelievable. And I was in the middle of the interview, and I was asking God, you know, what do I ask? You know, because it's a little intimidating. And wait, when we get back, I'll tell you what happened between Debbie Ryan and I when that when we come back from this particular uh, segment. But in the meantime, boy, we would love to hear your story. We got all kinds of room for that. You call us 866-348-7884, 866-34-TRUTH. We'll be right back. Welcome back to True Talk Lives, today's Mission Monday, and we're talking about mission quick 
prayer? When did you throw up a quick prayer that made a difference? You just get to see God do something. You're like, wow. Wow. When you have a chance to do it, that man, you had never seen anything from just, you know, finding your keys, technology, or maybe somebody sick, or even a dog situation, as we talked about. We would love your story. Please call us, 866 888-448-7884, 866-348-7884. When you think about the power of your story, your testimony, right? Somebody could be out there facing the same thing the next couple weeks, and all of a sudden they're going to remember your story, and they go to prayer, and they get to see it, right, as a testimony to what you've experienced. The number to call, because we want you to, 866-348-7884. 7884. And so when we left our hero, Debbie Ryan, as I was telling Mike and Buxman, that, you know, I had this, she played a really, really neat part in a really, really neat movie that was a Christian movie. But interestingly, some of the actors in the movie were not Christians. Um, and But I did not know which ones were which. And I was just, you know, had the opportunity to do the interviews. And so I was interviewing Debbie. And, you know, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit just said, Robbie, ask her if you can pray for her. So it's just like a little awkward, but okay. You know, so I was like, Debbie, is it all right if I pray with you? Like, how could we pray for you? And she was so sweet. It was unbelievable. She said, you know, I don't think anybody could begin to understand all the temptations that are thrown the way of a Disney star. And she said, I just, I would just have you pray that, that, um, that, that you would help me, you know, be strong against these things. She said, but can I also tell you something? I said, what's that? She goes, nobody has ever offered to pray for me. Right? Like, <laughs> do you think God knew that? Right, guys? Yeah, it's, that's, that's awesome, Robbie. I mean, I mean, you know, I, that's I, I uh, that should be our go-to, you know what I mean? Um, that that we should go to prayer because we should be continually being prayer with God. You know, our our spirit should be in tune with God continually and uh, all through the day, and that means pray without ceasing. And and then it's easy to spontaneously pray. When the um, when it the, the the when it comes around when you when you need to um, when you're in tune with God I mean you're going to be willing to pray when it needs to be prayer. Oh, that's um, that's well said, Mike and Buxman. What's your thoughts? Absolutely, I I agree with Brother Mike. Um, you, I would just say this to Truth Talk Live. Um, when you get that unction from the Holy Spirit of God, do not quench that Holy Spirit. Do not grieve that Holy Spirit, guys. Just go ahead and and pray, just as a Brother Robbie did with this um, Debbie Ryan, this, this star on the Disney Channel. God loves everybody, and he uses his children to minister that love to the people who don't know that he loves them yet. Well, I got to tell you guys, I, I don't know if either of you heard the Christian Car Guy show last Saturday, but I had something that just, it, it literally still is blowing my mind what happened. This lady called in and, and from Ohio, and, and, and she relayed a story that I, I've just thought about all weekend. I can't get it off my heart, that she was showing apartments. This was many years ago, but she used to show apartments, and while she was showing this apartment, all of a sudden, this man who looked like a fairly clean-cut young man all of a sudden pulled a gun out of his pants and, you know, essentially told her he was going to kill her and proceeded to, you know, rape her, essentially, is what happened. And she said that, wow. you know, there she is. The gun is laying next to her head. She couldn't be more vulnerable and, and unclothed, so to speak. And... You know, she's trying. She said, "I was so full of anxiety. I was so freaked out. It was just unbelievable." And she said, "She uh, she looked up, and out of the corner of the room came this like cone-shaped object that was obvious to her. It was the Holy Spirit." A- and she said, "Then all of a sudden, it fell on me, and I went completely calm." 
like all of a sudden this peace came over me if you're just picturing this scene like oh my gosh you're laying there with this guy your gun is next to your head he's telling you he's going to kill you because you know his name you've seen him you have all this information and he's telling you that he has no problem killing you which is what she relayed and all of a sudden god tells her i want you to share with this man that jesus loves him incredible right Right? And, and she's like, no, you got to be kidding me. And he was like, and he said, she said, God was forceful. She said, he said, no, that's what I want you to, I want you to share my love with him. And she, and she boldly, right? And, and with complete, you know, joy says to the man, which is unthinkable to me. And she says, excuse me, but the Lord wants you to know that Jesus loves you. And he then and, and immediately this, this guy grabs his head and he starts, you know, he, she said he looked like a monster. You know, when I first saw him, he looked like a pretty nice guy. But when he pulled that gun out, all of a sudden his countenance changed like he was a demon. And she said, when when I said that to him, immediately his countenance went back to the other person. And he was bemoaning, like screaming, oh, God, you know, like, how could I do this? How could I be this person? And all these things. But it didn't matter that, unfortunately, he turned back, grabbed the gun, you know, took her in the car. Apparently, she thought to take him to the take her to the woods and kill her. Um, and while she was in the car, God gave her this other, you know, like, just she started praising God, like, <laughs> Oh, thank you, Lord. Wow. You are an amazing God. You know, I just love you. And, you know, she's she's praising God. And the guy flips out again. And he jumps out of the car and runs away. Right. And saves his life. Saves her wow, life. Robbie. It saves her life. And and, and the fascinating thing is, then they go, you know, the, the police come, the ambulance, all that stuff. She goes to the hospital and she's telling the story and they all think she's nuts. How sad is that? Because, man, here you're hearing one of the most spectacular testimonies uh, that you'll hear, like how God came for this poor woman in this horrible situation. And, and, and you know, she's now in her 60s, and, and she can relay this story like, man, um, you know, talk about need for prayer. Right this <laughs> yeah. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord is our banner, Brother Robbie. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I got a quick story. Um, I, I I work in a in a bad area. I mean, I guess, and um, sometimes I stop in this convenience store and get gas and stuff. And and there's there's always a policeman all all the time, all around. And God led on my heart the other day. Next, Mike. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and um, anyways, God led on my heart. Every time you see a policeman and you're able to talk to him. Tell him that you're going to pray for him to keep him safe. And I said, okay, God, I'm going to do that every time. And, uh, you know, it's amazing. Um, I've been doing that every time. And, and, and the guys look at me and says, eh, thank you. And I says, well, I'm sure you're not used to this on this side of town. He goes, you're darn right. I says, i tell you what, I, I mean what I say. And I'm going to pray for you, sir, and keep you safe. And hopefully you know God. Well, have you goes, ever, I'm going to challenge you a little yeah. bit there, Mike. Have you ever just said, yeah. can I pray with you right now, sir? Uh, I knew I needed to do that a little bit better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that way you don't forget. I you know? am Dutch. I know. <laughs> I am Dutch. Dutch. East Dayton. Have Mike you really? I know that East Dayton is rough. And yeah, I had a least... guy come up to me, guys, and prayed immediately. And this guy was like, Wow, thank you, Bussman. And he came back and found me at a different day and said, that prayer worked. I'll never forget that. His name was Phil. I'll never forget that. Was it a policeman that you were talking about, Negative. Bussman? This was, this was a, nope, this was, this was a, a drug dealer. Oh, yeah. wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, well, it is. again, just the challenge, right? That, yeah, you know, we, we, we have these opportunities all the time. Um, if we're yeah. if we're open to what the Holy Spirit is saying, that like man, you're around, surrounded by people and 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 opportunities to make an impact and and see God show up, and y you can imagine um, the joy that man had, and 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 
you know, it's, it's, it's the old idea is that, you know, they all of a sudden they begin to see there's another point of life other than fine enjoying right. drugs, right? Right, or the, the, the surroundings they're around, you know, the policemen's around the surroundings all the day, all the time. And then just me, by saying me to him, I'm going to pray for you, he just, he says, oh, there is good people in the world. You know what I mean? There is people that, you know, that Amen. follow the law. You know what I mean? There is people that love God and want to obey the law and, you know. Um, you yeah. know, this by telling that policeman that, you know, that's what God laid on my heart about it. You know what I mean? So, um, I'm going to do it again. I can't wait to see another policeman and Bobby, <laughs> you know, the seatbelt hey, thing. Man, Mike. Yeah. I remember you, the seatbelt. You thing. did seatbelt. I, I did it again. I really used the seatbelt thing up the hill. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I was out of breath. <laughs> I'll bet. I mean, I think God's doing the seatbelt thing for me all the time. I mean, a stranded car and I'm like, Oh, okay, God, I'll stop and do it again. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's, it is hilarious. Uh, it says God is crazy. <laughs> you know, he's, he's funny, too. You know, crazy think, good. Like crazy oh, I, good, I, yes. I, I love it. Yeah. And I, you know what I love is the look in people's eyes when they share with you how God showed up through prayer. And, and so, you know, what an opportunity we have to make a difference. Guys, let's finish in prayer like we did that one time, Mike. Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for prayer. And thank you for a chance thank to you, connect Lord. with you. And and my friends, Mike and Bucksman, and all those listening, Lord, help us to be more bold to come with you in every situation.